Now, if you remember, magnetic lines of flux can never ever intersect. Is that correct? Yes. So what happens is the main magnetic lines of flux previously, before the armature cut, they were flowing in a straight line from the north pole of the field system to the south pole. Can they still do that now? No. Why not? Because of the secondary magnetic. So this is what happens. It comes here, it bends over like that, it bends over like that, it goes there. It comes down here, it bends like that, bends like that. Now when you take an elastic band and if you stretch it, if I leave it, will it remain the same length? It's going to go back to its original shape and size. So likewise, can you see that these elastic bands that you are stretching, they don't want to be straight. They want to become straight lines again. So what will they do? They'll push here, and this one will push there. Can you see? The arm just has to move. Okay. So, the principle of operation of a generator is given by what? By Faraday's law. What did Faraday's law tell us? Whenever we rotate a coil of wire inside a magnetic field, what happens? There's going to be an EMF in it. That's what we do. And what is the function of the EMF? To produce current. As soon as current begins to flow, what does the EMF then do? It maintains the potential difference, and it is the potential difference that now ensures that the current flows. Now, I want you to explain to me how does a motor work? What principle are you going to use to explain to me? Armature reaction. Armature reaction says it is the distortion of the main magnetic field entering and leaving the armature and it is caused by what? The secondary magnetic field. What is the secondary magnetic field? Produced by the So now, if I want this machine to turn faster or to do more work, can you see that if I increase the armature current, what happens to this distortion? It becomes bigger. It's like a bow and arrow. If I put in the arrow, pull here, leave it, the arrow will fall there. If I pull here, the arrow is going to go to the end of the blade. Do you agree? This is how you explain the operation of a DC motor. How many magnetic fields do I need? Two. Which two? The main? And the second element. Which current produces the main? Because tomorrow in speed control, I'm going to, we're going to refer to this. Which, uh, which current produces the main magnetic field? The field current. Secondary magnetic field? Okay. Now, these are magnetic lines of flux. Are they vector quantity or scalar quantity? Magnetic lines of flux always flow from the North to south. south. Around a conductor, hold the conductor in your right hand. If the thumb points in the direction of the current, then the magnetic field is clockwise. Is it vector or scalar? Vector quantity. It has magnitude and direction. So therefore, we are coming to a very, very difficult concept. And it's called Ampere turns a pole. We have the N5 and N6 test. Explain that to me. We just go and tell the student, magnetizing ampere turns per pole, cross magnet. You remember? What is it? What is it? Now I'm going back to what I showed you earlier on. There are three magnets. Which ones? Permanent. Permanent. Natural. Natural. And electromagnetic. And electromagnetic. Which magnet have we chosen to use? Electric. Why? Because we can because control it. Because we have control over it. You can make it a magnet by energizing or exciting it, or you can cancel it, you can make it stronger, you can make it weaker. Is that correct? Mm. Now, N4, guys. In an electrical circuit, what is the function of the EMF? to maintain the potential. Mm -hmm. What's the function of the EMF? To produce current flow. Current flows in a critical circuit. What do you think magnetomotive forces? Think of 
EMF and related to a magnetic circuit. EMF produces current flow. What flows in a magnetic circuit? Magnetic lines of flux. So tell me the definition or the function of MMF? Produces magnetic lines of flux. You see, in the case of a permanent magnet, it already has its amount of magnetic flux. In the case of a natural magnet dug out of the ground, it already has. But does a coil of wire produce magnetic flux? No. When will it produce magnetic flux? Only when you pass current through it. How do you make it stronger? Increase the current. Or increase the number of terms. Do you agree that MMF is I times N? Yes. Right. Now, this N, what does it represent? It represents the number of turns in the coil on the field. Field coil. How do you measure current? In what unit? Yes. How this N is what? Ten. Give me another name for MMF. Ampere? Okay, ten. So when we say calculate the magnetizing ampere turn purple I'm too big. What shall I say? Magnetizing MMF. Demagnetizing MMF. It sounds nicer. Now, the students will ask you, but why are you changing it? You show them what is MMF. MMF is magnetomotive force. That's the force that is going to produce magnetic flux. And how do you calculate MMF? It's the amount of current passed through the number of turns of the coin. Mm. Are you understanding? So now, can you see here, there are two forces, two vector quantities. What is the second one doing? It's either its horizontal component is opposing, and what is the vertical component doing? Changing the direction. What does distort mean? Change. So therefore, for us to calculate the total armature MMF. Give me another name for MMF. Ampere turns per four. So total armature M M F. You see, I'm not using the, the, the concept ampere turns per four now. Mm. I'm using M. It, there's a formula which says one over two I A over C Z over two. That's the total. Mm. Now of this armature, remember it's the armature ampere turn. It's the armature, uh, the secondary magnetic field that is going to oppose and distort the main one. So we're going to ask you, what part of that MMF is responsible for opposing? We call it DMAG, neutralizing. So DMAG equals to the same formula. 1 over 2, I A over C, Z over 2, P. But there is a factor. What is the factor? The angle. Yeah, which is 4 theta divided by 360 degrees. Is that correct? And then the cross mag, cross magnetizing, is going to be part of that, isn't that so? The, the remaining part. And that becomes 1 over 2, I A over C, Z over 2 P. And what is the balance? 1 minus 4 theta divided by 360. You see? So do you understand how to teach it now? You don't just go there and begin the you, you You start like this. Teach them what the vector quantity is. Show them how one vector can do two things and explain why. The second thing here, these are vector quantities. Don't go and try to prove the formula you just confused with. Mm. But there's something very important here. And this theta is actually called, what is it? What's the value of theta? Should be the electrical um, the now what's phase it called? shift. The phase? Electrical phase shift. Okay, in what degrees? Should be in electrical degrees. Right. So this here is actually these are not called the phase shift, it's called the brush shift. Right? And it is in degrees electric. Now you're all teaching electricity. Who's gonna to explain to me what's degrees electrical, what's degrees mechanical? 
let me hear from you, then see, I can change my mind. <laughs> come on, come on, you are our colleagues, come. Do you understand it? If the students ask you in class, can you explain to them? Or you want to hear how I do it? Let's hear how you do it. <laughs> 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 then we'll explain. <laughs> All right. So, so uh, you know, the brush it comes like way to improve commutation. Yes. We yes. shift the brush it either back or forward, right? Yes. So the angle between the normal geometric neutral axis and the magnetic neutral axis, that's the angle theta we're talking about. Now that is you all explain. I only wanted to show you where the formula comes from.